Hey guys, and welcome back to the first part where we'll discuss about fragments. As an Android developer, you'll often come across the concept of fragments, which play a crucial role in creating flexible and dynamic user interfaces. Fragments are considered as a reusable part of the UI. They're like mini activities that you can combine and arrange to create seamless user experience. Now, you might be wondering how are fragments related to activities? Well, activities represent full screens in your app, while fragments allow you to break down those screens into smaller reusable parts. This makes it easier to manage and update your app's UI. While activities can exist on their own, fragments cannot, as fragments need something to contain them, a host activity or another fragment. Additionally, fragments are incredibly useful when you want to create different layouts for different screen sizes or orientation. For example, here we have a UI of an app on a phone device. And here is the anatomy of this UI, just an activity that hosts a single fragment. Say for instance that you are showing the recent news titles, and whenever the user clicks on any of those titles, a new fragment is added on the current fragment to show the details of the clicked news heading. So for a phone device with a limited screen space, this layout could be a suitable layout to be used. But on a tablet device where there is more screen space available, we can dynamically change the UI to have the following appearance. As the anatomy shows, it's an activity that hosts two fragments. One shows the recent news headings and the other shows the details of the collect news. With fragments, you can do different things like adding, removing, or changing fragments in your app. These operations are called transactions and the one in charge of managing and keeping track of them is called the fragment manager. Your activity talks to the fragment manager and the fragment manager talks to the fragment transaction API that the manager uses to get those operations done. While this might be complicated in theory, it is pretty much easy to implement practically and we are going to see how this works. Fragments also have their own lifecycle, similar to the activity lifecycle. They go through stages like creation, interaction, and destruction. In the creation stage, the onAttach callback is the first to be called when the fragment is associated with an activity. It provides you access to the containing activity, enabling fragments activity communication. Following this, the onCreate method is called for initial setup, typically for non-UI related tasks, so it's not advisable to touch any UI on the onCreate within the fragments. Another callback in this stage is the onCreate view where you create and inflate the fragments layout, preparing it for display. Moving to the interaction stage, the onViewCreated callback comes after the onCreateView. This is a good spot to interact with the fragments UI elements. The onStart and the onResume are similar to the activities callbacks. The onStart callback marks when the fragment becomes visible to the user, followed by the onResume which gives a signal that the fragment is active and ready to receive user interactions. Moving to the destruction stage, on post indicates the fragment is losing focus but still visible, followed by the on stop, where the fragment is no longer visible or interactive. The on destroy view callback is used to release resources associated with the fragment's UI as the layout is destroyed. Then comes the on destroy method, which is called for cleanup and finalization tasks. Finally comes the on detach callback, which is the last in the lifecycle. It signals that the fragment is no longer attached to an activity, acting as an opposite of the on attach. So we are back here to Android Studio and we are going to learn how we can create fragments. But before that, let's look at our UI for the main activity. So go to the root here. And here's our UI. So the first thing that I did is adding this horizontal guideline at 50% of the screen. So that's why I have 0.5 here. And then add these two buttons here. The first one shows the first fragment. The second one shows the second fragment. And I have this text view here, which is just redundant. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And finally, we have this container here, which is the fragment container view. So fragment container view is used as a container for our fragments within the main activity or within any activity. So whenever you click on any of these buttons here, our fragments are going to be added within this container here. So let's learn how we can create fragments. So there are two ways, the manual one by creating a class, then extend the fragment class, 
and then create the layout, then attach it to the fragment, or just by using the shortcut within Android Studio. So let's first use the manual way. So here, let's create a new plain Kotlin class. I'm going to call it first fragment. And here I'm going to extend from the fragment class, comes from Android x.fragment.app, and add the constructor. Now here within the constructor, you can see if you press Ctrl P that it takes a layout res or layout resource. So we are going to attach our layout or the fragment layout to this first fragment class. Let's go here to create the layout. I'm going to call it fragment first. And here we are going to have just a simple text to view within this fragment. So text to view, wrap and wrap. The text is going to say first fragment. And then I'm just gonna increase the size around 25 SP. And finally, I'm going to center it within the parent. Now, let's go to the first fragment and add our layout here. r.layout.firstfragment or fragment first. Now this attaches the layout to the fragment directly without using any callbacks. Further details about the callbacks will be discussed in the future videos. Now, let's create a fragment by using Android Studio shortcuts. Go to File, New, then Fragment, and here you can see a predefined templates that you can use. In this case, we're using a blank fragment. Let's name our fragment to Second Fragment, and it's going to also generate the fragment layout automatically. Now, let's click OK, make sure it's Scotland first, so this is the preferred language, and click Finish. Here, you can see that it creates the fragment and added some initial code. For now, we are just going to delete all of these codes and we are going to pass the second fragment layout to the second fragment class, so r.layout.fragmentSecond. Here, by default, whenever you use Android Studio Shortcut to create a fragment, it creates a layout using the frame layout, which is known as a layout that contains only a single child. So for now, let's just override this by using the same layout from the first fragment, which has the constraint layout. And instead of first fragment, we are going to say second fragment. The last step is to go to the main activity and start adding the fragments. Now before adding the fragments, if you want to add the fragment from the XML file within the container, you can do that by using the name attribute. So here, add Android name, and you can see that it suggests it to fragments, the first one and the second one, use anyone. And once you run the app, you can see that it directly attaches the fragment to the fragment container, like this here. Now, what we want to achieve is whenever we click on any of these buttons, we want to move from one fragment to another. So for this, let's go to the main activity. And here we are going to interact with the fragment manager and the fragment transaction API. So let's first add a click listener to our buttons, so button one dot sit on click listener, and button two dot sit on click listener. And here we want to get access to the fragment manager. So the way to get this within the activity is by using git support fragment manager, or if you're using Kotlin, then you can simply say support fragment manager. And here we have to get access to the fragment transaction. So we can use the begin transaction function, which returns fragment transaction object. And finally, we call apply. And this apply function here, just in brief details, a scope function from Kotlin, which utilizes the receiver feature from Kotlin, so it doesn't have any connection with the fragment manager or fragment transaction. The good thing about it is that it gives you a Lambda, which has access to the receiver or the object that you called this with. Like here, we are calling this apply with the fragment transaction, so it gives us access to the fragment transaction. So that makes it useful to call the fragment transaction functions without having to use the dot notation. So here you can simply say add, which comes from the fragment transaction class, remove, or for example, replace. So this is useful whenever you want to avoid using the dot notation over and over again. Now let's start adding fragments. So the first thing you want to do is to create an object of your desired fragments. So here I'm going to create an object of the first fragment, so first fragment, then an object of the second fragment, second fragment, and here what we want to do is to call the add function. Now the add function has multiple overloads, 
the first thing we want to pass is the container view ID. So here within the main activity, our fragment container view has this ID. So let's pass this ID by using r.id.fragmentContainer. Then we pass our fragment object. So here we are going to pass frag1. Now lastly, call commit function, which must be called after any transaction. So since you added the first fragment, then you have to call commit. Now similarly for the second button here, take the same code, add it to the second button. And instead of using the second fragment, we are going to use the fragment second or the second fragment. Now we are going to run to see how this works. Here, first fragment is there by default because we added this fragment from the XML. Click on the second fragment, you can see that the second fragment gets on top of the first fragment. Click again on the first fragment, click on the second fragment, and your app crashed. So why is that? This is because you're adding the same fragment over and over again. And the error here says that you are adding a fragment that has already been added. So instead of that, we could just simply say remove any fragments before adding the same fragment. So here, if you are adding the first fragment, we want to remove the second fragment. Remove the frag first and remove frag second. So this is just to avoid when the user clicks two times on this button because they are going to add the same fragment twice. So here we remove both of fragments. We want to do this again within our second button. Now let's see how this behaves. Click on the first fragment, second fragment. You can see that the second fragment is on top of the first fragment, though we said that we don't want the second fragment. We want the second fragment to be removed. Well, this is because we added this first fragment within the activity main XML by default. So whenever you add the second fragment, the first fragment will always be visible. So instead of that, we're just going to remove the default fragment from here. And now we are going to run. And here, no fragment there by default. Click on the second fragment. Then the first fragment, you can see the fragment gets removed first before being added to the fragment container. Now, instead of using remove, then add, we could simply say replace, which is equivalent to remove and add functions. So here, instead of using remove, let's add replace. And again, it takes a container view ID and the fragment. So I'm going to pass the same arguments from the add. Then I'm going to get rid of the add and remove. Similarly for the other button, let's get rid of all of these. And instead of the first fragment, add the second fragment. And now here, click on the first fragment, second fragment. Again, you can see that it gets replaced, which is internally removes any fragments and add the new fragments that you have passed to the replace method. Now, if you want to show a default fragment whenever the user runs the app, you could just simply add the same block of code here. Whenever the user opens the app, they will see the first fragment there by default within the container. Then you could just seamlessly move from one fragment to another by clicking on the buttons. So by default, fragments are now added to the back stack. You can see here, I'm navigating between both of the fragments. And if I hit the back button, we just leave the app. So if you want to add the fragment to the back stack, you can do this by calling the add to back stack function. And here you have to provide a name to differentiate between the different fragments on the back stack. Since we are replacing the first fragment or adding the first fragment, I want to just call this first fragment. And for the second fragment, I'm going to add this with second fragment. Now calling add to backstack requires you to add set ordering allowed to true to provide seamless navigation and transition between the different fragments. So let's just add this pretty quickly. Set reordering allowed to true here and there. And now let's run to see how the backstack works. So here, the first fragment is added. If you click back, you can see we navigate back to the first fragment click back again, we leave the app. Now, last thing that I want to discuss in this video is that you might see another snippet of code within the documentations when working with fragments, something like this here, support fragment manager dot commit, which gives you a Lambda to add your transactions. So this snippet of code here requires a dependency to work with. And the code that we have written in this video is pretty much equivalent to the code that you see on the documentations. The second thing is that sometimes you might see in some code base that people are using fragment tag instead of the fragment container view, something like this. It is fine, but it's preferred to use the fragment container view. 
Some other people also use the frame layout as a container for the fragments, which is also fine. But again, it's preferred to use the fragment container view. So that was it for the first part of fragments. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.